Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this episode, we're gonna finish up our discussion of Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener. We're going to tie up everything we've talked about in the previous two episodes about Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener by working on this image. Uh, this is an image of a Japanese snow monkey, a macaque, that I took at the Buffalo Zoo. As you could see, I shot through a chain link fence and you could barely see that chain link fence there. But what I'd like to do is selectively sharpen the monkey's face because I think that will help draw everyone's attention to the eyes, nose, and face of the monkey and they won't notice the fence itself as readily. And the fence is kind of a nice framing of the face as well. So as you can see, we're in Photoshop. And you may know from all our previous episodes that when we're in Photoshop, I prefer to work from a smart object because with a smart object, you'll be able to go back into any of the Nick plugins and readjust things. It kind of remembers where you left off. If you don't work from a smart object, then once you're done with the plugin and you return to Photoshop, all those adjustments get baked in and you can't go back in and readjust them. So, to that end, I'm going to go over here to this background later and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to hit Command J because I have a Mac. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control J. Then I want to create the smart object. I'm just going to right click on layer one and I'm going to go down to convert to smart object and it just takes a second. You can see now it's a smart object. Now I'm ready to send this over into Sharpener Pro 3, raw pre-sharpener. I'm going to go up to the top filter menu then down to Nick Collection, then to that Sharpener Pro 3, Raw Pre-Sharpener. And it will now take that smart object, and it comes up with this warning. Again, remember about the brush. I've talked about that brush is worthless, so it's no big deal that that brush isn't going to be there. We'll click OK. And now we're opened up in Sharpener Pro 3. So we're going to kind of use a little bit, or maybe most of the tools here. That's what this wrap-up video is about. What I want to do, as I mentioned, is sharpen the monkey's face. And I'm going to do that, I think the most effective way, is with color ranges. And I'm going to click on this eyedropper here to set the first color range. And I'm going to go right here on the monkey's iris, right there. Now, if I seem to be going a little bit too quickly, those of you that haven't seen the previous two videos, um, if you have time, watch those you'll see I explain color ranges more thoroughly and uh, control points and things like that in those previous two videos. This video, I'm just kind of wrapping everything up. Now with the second um, color range, I'm going to click on that eyedropper. And I think I'll start up here and I'll do this like, like whiter part of the monkey's brow. Then this one right here, I'll click that um, eyedropper and I'll click more on the monkey's uh, face in there. Then I'm going to add another one, so I'm going to click this little plus sign. And with this fourth one, I'll click uh, the black, maybe this grayer fur, this grayer fur in here. 
then I'm going to take that and turn that all the way up to 100 like the other three. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to grab, grab that dropper and I'm going to click this one on the black refer right there. And I think I got all the colors covered that I want to cover. I'm going to take that slider and put that up to 100. Now, to see what I did, I'm going to go up here with this adaptive sharpening slider and I'll push that up. And I'm just going to push it way up. And you can see that it's pretty much sharpening like I wanted to. The sharp, it's sharpening the uh, macaque's face, but it really is sharpening too much up in here. I really want everyone's attention to be on uh, Mrs. Macaque's face. Um, so, with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that high for now. And I'm going then to go to control points. And we have positive control points where I could apply sharpening or negative control points where I'm going to take sharpening away. So I want to take sharpening away from all around her face. So I'm going to click on the minus control point and I'm going to put one up in this top left or top right hand corner. And you can see where as soon as I clicked it kind of uh, took away any sharpening that was there. And I'm going to size it so it, it you know, kind of just hits this area here and doesn't hit her face. Now, um, remember, wherever you place that point, wherever that little button is, it looks at tone, uh, texture, and color, and it will uh, just affect or mainly affect that tone, texture, and color that is within that circle, that area of influence. And you can see as I move it out and in. So we're going to have to put a number of these. I don't really want to affect her face. So I'm going to duplicate this negative control point by holding the Alt or Option key. And it's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And just drag another one over here. And I'm going to resize this. And then I'm going to do it again over here. Got to come in a little more on this one. Make that one really small. Another one down here. And then another one down here. And again, I just want that sharpness to really be on her face. I don't really want anything else that sharp. I really want to uh, control everyone's gaze towards her face. And hopefully then they won't notice uh, that fence is readily and maybe that fence will help better frame her face too if it's not every anything under that fence isn't as sharp if that makes any sense so that's my my intention and i'll just keep doing this so we have a number of control points you may notice too if you kind of just slowly move this around and give it a chance to render you could uh, see the focus drop out and that will better help you place each of those control points. So let's go up here uh, with the preview checkbox. There's before and there's after. There's before, there's after. Now we still have the white, um, the white fur very, very sharp. There's before, there's after. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump back over into the color ranges. Now I have adaptive sharpening really super high, right? But I think sometimes it's more effective instead of just globally adjusting the sharpening. If you come in here and uh, adjust each of the colors, uh, the amount of sharpening of each of the colors individually, I think the white is just a little too sharp. So like there's before and there's after. And look at like kind of the white edges. I just think that's a little bit too crisp. So I'm going to go to the white color range. And I'm going to go to this opacity slider and I'm just going to pull it down. It kind of takes a second to render. So there's before, after, before, after. It's getting better. Still not quite there. But I think that's okay. Um, let's see. Maybe kind of come in and move each of them individually until you see the effect you want. So I think that looks pretty good. So there's before and there's after. 
Now I could drop some more control points in here, right? So I could go back over here to control points and I could add another negative control point, put it more directly on this like white fur right in here, resize it. Uh, maybe I could duplicate this, hold that alter option key in again and go like right on, try to and yeah, there, that's better right there. Those, those uh, white hairs here were just kind of spiked out a little bit too much to my liking. Put another one over here. There's no rule here. You could add a bazillion control points to get the effect you want. And um, maybe this down here on the white. Yeah, that's a little better. Another one down there. So let's finally say that I'm happy with this. I have it really much the way I want it. I have her face sharp before, after, and it's framed. It's not, it drops off to blurriness all around so that uh, hopefully everyone's uh, gaze is looking towards the McHack's face. I'm going to go over here in the lower right hand corner and click OK. And it's going to save this, um, this image. And we're, as you can see, we're back in Photoshop. And now because we created that smart object, it's a smart filter. We have a mask. So I could click on this mask and get the brush tool in Photoshop. And then I could actually paint in black. So right now I have the white and black color swatches here. If you don't have white and black, hit the D key on your keyboard. That stands for default. And you'll get the default colors. Right now, though, I need that black swatch in front of the white swatch. I could hit this little arrow there, or I could hit the X key on my keyboard. And I'm going to get a bigger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And I make sure that I'm clicked on the mask. And I could come in and I could remove the sharpening now. That's the advantage of using Photoshop, right? So I could remove the sharpening from around the macaque's face. I'm at an opacity of 40, I'm sorry. Let's put that opacity at 100, and you'll better see. So because we were in Photoshop, I didn't really have to put all those control points down, did I? I could have just came to this mask, those negative control points to remove the sharpening. I could have just worked on this mask and did it that way. And that's an advantage of you doing this in Photoshop. So now we're really just... Uh, sharpening her face. Now there's the original and there's our sharp image. Original, sharp. So I didn't over sharpen it. It's, it's subtle. Hopefully you could see that in the video. As a matter of fact, I'll zoom in uh, right there so you could better see it. I'll, in post-production, make the screen larger there so you could see the sharpening. And I think it did a great job. Actually, I, I really am impressed with the uh, NYX Sharpener Pro 3 RAW pre-sharpener. I think it does a great job. And I just to wrap everything up, it's called the raw pre-sharpener. It doesn't work on raw files. All right, it, I don't, that's why I call it's called that. I have no idea. Uh, it, you have to convert your raw file uh, to a JPEG or a TIFF to work with the Sharpener Pro 3 raw pre-sharpener. Also, even though it's called a pre-sharpener, I recommend you do it later in your workflow. So process your image and remove noise in your image early in your workflow. Remove noise early in your workflow with Define. Then process your image. Then go to the raw pre-sharpener and sharpen your image. Then you could share it online and things like that. Then if you want to print your image, then you're going to use the other sharpener that the output sharpener tool that is in Nick and we're going to be covering that in our next video. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.